was a long opener. This is the Nighthawk Carbon from AudioQuest. It's my understanding that AudioQuest makes a lot of very high-end, excellent audio cables and other accessories for audiophiles. And recently, I think as uh, maybe 2015 or 16, AudioQuest began making their own headphones. And here is the second generation. This is the AudioQuest Nighthawk Carbon. The original Nighthawk was made of slightly different materials. Same basic outline. This particular version, it supposedly improves on the first version. I didn't have the first version. I ran across the Nighthawk when I was doing my research for high-end but affordable headphones. And the Nighthawk retails for about $700 to $800. On eBay, you can find the Nighthawk between $300 and $400. And on Amazon, just about a week and a half ago, I found this, brand new, as you can see, for $150. That's right. Something that typically is supposed to be sold for seven to $800, I got for 150 I had not heard much about the Nighthawks. I knew that there was quite a split in opinion. Some people who really like the Nighthawks and some people who really dislike the Nighthawks. But for $150, a one-time opportunity, I had to take it, and so I did. This is the Nighthawk. It opens up like a book. The first thing that you're greeted with is the headphones pre-flight guide, but we'll get to that. On the left-hand side, you have a very nicely packaged uh, marketing stuff. And, and when I say nicely packaged, that plastic is pretty darn thick. There's some warranty information there with a microfiber cloth. And now to the pre-flight guide. It says 150 hours. You see, the company recommends that you run these headphones for 150 hours before you pass judgment upon them. They have engineered this particular um, headphone in such a way that it requires you to have it go through pink noise or just random audio for music for 150 hours before everything, all the drivers, well, both drivers, and the audio cable is capable of producing its optimum sound. Unusual, isn't it? It's unusual to have an audio company, a headphone manufacturer, tell you as soon as you open their box that, listen, you really shouldn't judge this headphone for another month. 150 hours, that's basically a full working month. Eight hours a day, five days a week equals 160 hours of work time. Anyway, the headphones feel really light and incredibly premium. You have to hold these things in your hand to understand how careful you have to be with these. I, 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 when I opened the box, I felt as if I might accidentally break these things. Look at the box. There's so much padding there. There's more padding in this box for this one headphone than all the boxes for all the headphones that I've ever purchased or sold. It's insane. These headphones are made by people who love headphones or people who really love their own product. Inside, deeper, you find this strap. It, it doesn't come undone as far as I can tell. But the strap holds a carrying bag for the uh, headphones. It's a very nice carrying bag, feels premium. And there's a smaller bag which contains the Nighthawk's uh, singular cable. I don't think that this is a proprietary cable per se. You, you can probably find a similar cable online. But this particular cable has 2.5 millimeter in, left and right, and a 3.5 millimeter jack. It also has a button uh, down the length of this cable, which allows you to play, pause, skip tracks by pressing the button the requisite number of times, which is kind of nice. We'll get back to the cable later. 
Now, one thing I said to myself as I was putting the stuff back in the box was, there is no way that these fragile headphones are leaving my home. And if they are, they're going in this very cushiony box. I do not trust me with those headphones in that carrying bag. You have to put in a little bit of force to get the headphones in and out. And that's also scary because there's not a lot of structure around the headphones. In other headphones, you have metallic um, headbands. This, th there is a, there's a headband. I don't know what it's made of, but I can tell you that if you put your mind to it, you can definitely break that thing with minimal effort. $150, ladies and gentlemen, on Amazon.com. If you go there, you might still be able to find it. There were, I think, nine when I purchased this back on February 15, 2019. So I decided, you know, I'm going to give this a try. I, I am not going to pass judgment, but I'm also not going to pass up the chance to pass judgment. Wait, hold on. What I mean to say is I am going to pass judgment because it's important for everybody to understand what these headphones can give you the first moment that you turn them on. So the cable I mentioned, it's, it's a short cable, and I do appreciate that. I like the fact that this cable uh, is not going to make me want to strangle a small child because it's long enough for me to connect it to my media player and put it in my pocket, but short enough so that I don't have to use it as a jumping rope. The cable itself is incredibly thick. I mean, it's really, really thick. It's made of some sort of rubber or a coating of some rubber. And I don't really like it. I don't like this cable. I don't like it because you can see that it's all janked up. In other words, it's loopy. It's going to take time for this cable to straighten up. And I don't really like that. I, I wish that they had made this cable, uh, well, covered with some sort of other material so that it wasn't going to turn out like this. I know I'm going to have to spend a long time keeping it straight and working with it and untangling it for it to eventually become straight. Maybe it's 150 hours, who knows? Maybe once the current is going through this, these cables, they'll straighten each other, they straighten itself out. The marketing manual that you saw in that plastic packaging before, I'm just going through that here. And like I said, it, it's interesting. They, they put a lot of effort into this well, the whole package, everything here is so darn premium. I, I have never seen something this incredible before. Incredible as in opening it up and going through it. This is like reading their story, the manufacturer's story, the love they put into this headphone. And I know that sounds really stupid, but you have to see this in person. And for $150, if you go to Amazon, you might be able to buy it. Also, I don't get any Amazon kickbacks. Trust me, I don't get any kickbacks whatsoever. But if you want to send me some money, I will take it. Regardless, the manual is unique in the sense that it's full color and the pages are amazingly crisp. They're wonderful. It's like a picture book. And they go through the steps and the reasons why they do whatever it is they do. And I kind of just skimmed through that material. I wasn't really interested in their mindset. I just wanted to get to it. So the there are left and right jacks. And initially, I was trying to figure out which one's which. Uh, which ear cup is left, which one is right. There was no designation on the outside or underneath. So I figured... Well, maybe it's kind of like being ambidextrous. Yeah, I can plug in the left and right into either one and not worry about it. I just got to remember which one's the right uh, right plug. And so that's what I did. I put it in. And the headband, it self-adjusts, which is really nice. Just put it on your head and it plops right down. It's not particularly soft, but it's not uncomfortable either. The cups themselves are suspended. It's suspended by something. I, I don't know what it is that suspends it. It's not rubber bands, but it's certainly some sort of rubberized material, perhaps. And the basis, the explanation for why they did that, AudioQuest did it, 
is so that it minimizes the sound of movement on the headphone. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's cool. It's neat. But it's also another. It's another element of this headphone that is very fragile. And <laughs> as I was manipulating this headphone, I I didn't know where to put my hands. I had no idea how I was going to not break these things within the first 10 minutes of me opening the box. But I didn't. So that goes to show that this headphone was very well engineered. I currently have the headphones connected to my Hibby R6 um, media player. And I didn't play any FLAC files. I just played Spotify. I have a just I have a playlist that I listen to every day. It has over 110 songs on there. It has a whole variety of genres. And one, the thing I noticed immediately upon turning on the Hibby and starting to play music is that, wow, the sound just hits you right up front. What do I mean by that? Well, this is these headphones are 25 ohms, which is really drivable by almost any device you can possibly think of, any modern device you can possibly think of. Your cell phone, a, an MP3 player, iPod, for example, or a dedicated digital uh, audio player like this, a DAP like the R6 here, which are capable, a DAP is typically capable of driving more ohms to a, a set of headphones. So therefore they're a little bit better, well, there's more than one reason, but they are better in using it a DAP rather than an mp3 player like an iPod. Regardless, I have tried many headphones with the R6 and none of them have responded with the up-in-your-face vocals and sound in general like the Nighthawks. And that's because it's 25 ohms. All All my other headphones are at least 32 ohms. I have some that are 250 ohms. I have a few that are coming in that are 300 ohms. So yeah, the 25 ohms hit me. So that's not really impressive considering how these headphones are driven by the amount of power that's required to to, to use them uh, to their max. And I have to say, I'm glad it's 25 ohms because that means that if you have your mp3 player and ipod that's all you have or you just your phone you can use these headphones you don't need to go out and purchase a dap in order to use the headphones now as i went through my playlist i i just i was flabbergasted at the sound just really clear very very clear sound this is not a balanced cable as far as i know maybe it is i, I didn't find it in the reading material but then again i didn't really read it i like the shiny pictures uh, I, I just, even now, as I go back and I think about it, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. My initial impression is that I'm impressed. Because there's a lot here. These headphones, at minute one, sound better than, I would say, any bare dynamic headphone that I have listened to pre-2016. These are better than any Beats headphones or any Bose headphones, bar none. Hands down. These headphones, I think, are giving me a very true experience of the music. There are, are some commentators online that say that, that these headphones color the music. They give you a darker or warmer tone to the music. And that may be the case. Maybe after 150 hours, I will begin to hear some warmer notes. But by then, I will have forgotten the initial impression. I, The bass, the bass on these is really good for an open back pair of headphones. I mean, these are open back. And I was... I was astounded. The bass 
is clean and it hits with emphasis. It's not jarring by any any sense. It's not bone shattering for you know good reasons. It's not quite the same bass. It's not the same bass as the Denon D2000 that I reviewed previously. The bass on the D2000s, if amplified properly, is really, really fun to listen to. It's not accurate to the song, but it's really fun to listen to. Uh, but the bass on this is, well, it just hits you. <laughs> you make, you feel as if, I feel as if, when the bass comes in on a song, that it's really just coming in on a song. It just kind of hits you. I know the bass just happened in a good way. Now, here's the ear cups. It's uniquely shaped. The pad replacement system, I like. I, I really like the pad replacement system. The left and right ear cups can only go on the left or right. They're not interchangeable. And this is where I discovered that there is, in fact, a left or right. So I was listening to the headphones backwards. I figured this out after I tried to put on the left ear cup, but it turned out that that was actually the right ear cup. You see, <laughs> the designation of left or right is actually inside the ear cup itself, the cushion itself. There's a fabric mesh, and on there there's an L or an R, and I had completely forgotten, or actually didn't see, because it's dark. And so... <laughs> It wasn't obvious to me. Where would manufacturers typically put designation of left or right? Either outside or just inside the cup. And prominently labeled, by the way. So here I am, finally figuring things out. It just snaps in, no issues. Except for the fact that I was afraid that I was going to break these things as I was taking the ear cups out. I mean, it, <laughs> it takes a little bit of force. Not a whole lot, but a little bit of force to yank the air cups out, and again, more force to put them back in. And as you're doing that, as I was doing it, I was thinking to myself, how how do I keep this headphone from breaking? How do I how do I keep it from breaking, disintegrating in my hand? And it, it didn't. I was obviously being exceptionally careful, but it didn't. That goes to the materials here. Yeah, the first 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of my handling of this headphones, I didn't break it. I don't tend to break my headphones. I take rather good care of them. So, why am I impressed? Because it looks so fragile. Because there's hardly anything holding these things together. So I have just here replaced the protein pads with the uh, the other ones. They're, they're fabric pads. They're not velour, it's something else entirely they're comfortable I think they're more comfortable than the protein pads now in the manual audio quest says that you should use the protein pads if you want more definition in the treble and a little bit more emphasis in the bass okay well upon putting on the other ones the fabric I found it much more pleasant I thought that the bass was just fine I, I, in fact, I thought the base was better with the fabric than with the protein. I also thought that it was... Well, I, I didn't notice any difference in the treble. But if, it, if there was, it was clearly more pleasant difference than negative difference. I am relatively sensitive to treble response, which is why I have not listened to a Bear Dynamic headphone since about 2016. Because I gave up on them their treble is, their high notes are ear piercing for me. I'm going through, as you're watching this, I'm going through my web browser right now and I'm, and I, and I'm contemplating their next headphone, which is the Night Owl. There's a Night Hawk and then there's the Night Owl. The Night Owl is the closeback version of the of, of the Night Hawks. And if I can find it for about $150, I think I'm going to buy that too. I, yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. But look, if you, these headphones go for about $700, right? MSRP. And it, I can't. I'm on eBay right now. 
looking for Nighthawks. Nighthawks Carbon, the second version, the one that's supposed to be a reiteration and improvement upon the original Nighthawks, they're, they're going to $300. $300 used, not brand new, used. And there's not a whole lot of listings here. There's one, two. There's two listings of the, of the Carbons on eBay. The brand new is $300, the used is $230. The older version, version one, there are three, four. One of them is at $413 plus $30 shipping. Another one is $300. Another one is $189, but looks like there's a little bit of issues with that. The Night Owl. The Night Owl itself goes for $300, $350, and there's not that many online. I, I, <laughs> so here's, here's, here's the bottom line. These are unique headphones. I am currently sitting here recording this. I have the headphones connected to my R6, and it's just playing at low volume. I'm not listening to it, it's just playing. I'm going to let it do a thing. I'm going to let it burn in. And I hope that the, the, I hope that the headphones become a little bit warmer because that's the type of, of notes that I like. That's the type of music that I want to listen to. It's warm, it's comforting, it kind of envelops you. I don't like the sharp, I don't like the pristine. I don't want to hear it like the like the the creator wanted it to sound. I want to listen to it the way it makes me feel. I want to be comfortable in it. I want to enjoy the music. I might listen to a song for only the purpose of listening to the beat. I might listen to a song just so that I can get to that one five second portion of it that just makes me feel something. And I may never know the lyrics of a song. In fact, I don't know the lyrics of the vast majority of songs I've listened to dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times. So what does that mean? Well, I think that means that this, this pair of headphones, I suspect, I hope, is going to give me an opportunity to enjoy music in an involving manner. I don't know of any other pair of headphones. Maybe there is something out there costing $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, but I don't know of any other reasonably priced headphones that require you to work with it for 150 hours. So that's what I mean by evolve. After 150 hours, I want to know, have the headphones changed to my preference or have I changed to the headphones preference? As you can see here, I'm really excited to find out.